Everybody clear? Hitting anybody? That's like 2.2 amps. TU and DEC are in the Adirondacks today. We have our teams out and we're really trying to understand where the brook trout are within the South Branch Moose River watershed with the goal of reconnecting, restoring habitat for brook trout. We're not only going to get this important work done, which is going to be sustainable for a very, very long time for generations to come. We're doing work here today to make sure that these fish can adapt in the future. The wisdom of those people that came before us that set the stage for all this. Our forefathers here in New York saw the value in the Adirondack Park. Thank God that they did that, because if they didn't, we wouldn't have this opportunity. One organization or the other can't do all of the work. There's a lot to do, and to see a crew of TU and DEC folks coming out to sample fish, let's do this. Yeah. This is gonna be the ordinary here for the next few years in the Moose River Plains. We are here at the Moose River Plains. We are actually on Governor's Brook, which is a tributary to the Red River. And the reason why we're here is we really are trying to understand where the brook trout are. When we look at the science, the Adirondacks really represents the strongholds for brook trout in New York. Okay, so we're gonna split up into two teams. We're gonna have one go above the culvert, one go below. There's gonna be three sites total and we're gonna make our way down this trail. It's gonna take about a 40 minute walk or so. Brook trout are one part of this integrated system. While we want to see where they're dispersed and how they're dispersed, what that pattern looks like, maybe we can look at a culvert later or something to show where those connections get broken. Looking at that as a whole really helps us put this together. We'll map this out and it'll tell us where to get important work done. And the beautiful thing here is that we're not only going to get this important work done, which is going to be sustainable for a very, very long time for generations to come, it's also going to be here as a learning environment for us. How important it is to be able to go downstream? How important it is to be able to go upstream? We do know that they need that ability though. We also know that we need some mixing in the population for genetic diversity. The Moose River Plains is comprised of a diversity of habitat that flow into larger river systems that wind its way through what we call the plains. From the headwater streams to larger rivers to swamplands and wetlands that are interconnected that provide a diversity of habitat and eventually it makes its way to the Black River and then on into the Great Lakes. We're standing here at an unnamed tributary of the south branch of the Moose River. This is a stream that is one of Trout Unlimited's priorities for culvert replacements. Uh, when we sampled the fish populations above and below, we recognized that there's only brook trout below and no brook trout above. So replacing this culvert would provide uh, passage for these brook trout up to 1.5 miles upstream. This culvert here in particular has significant backwatering and you can see the silt that I'm standing in is a testament to that. We probably pass over hundreds of culverts in our life and very few of us, unless you played in them when you were a kid, know what a culvert is. Did you play in them when you were a kid? Oh yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what we would like to see in a culvert is the stream acting like the stream. So we don't want, if you're a fish and you're moving through the system, you don't want there to be a barrier to any kind of movement. And DEC is trying to provide the funding for those mechanisms. As we said, this work is not cheap. It's very labor intensive. In addition to the technical assistance that Trout Unlimited is providing, the state of New York, DEC, through the Environmental Bond Act, is going to inject millions of dollars into projects like this to restore these natural systems 
for not only the fish, but also to add resiliency in the face of very flashy and unpredictable episodic events that are associated with climate change. Yeah, so we'll do four and four. You, most yeah. of the time, so. you guys want to go upstream? Right there under your net. Oh, you got him. Today we're using backpack electrofishing to sample this stream. In some systems we can use boats or barges. Basically what we do in this stream, we use four units to make sure we're covering the whole width of the stream and kind of pushing the fish upstream as we go. And we'll electrofish in a set section of stream. We know how wide the stream is and how long of a section we sample. And by doing that, we can get a population estimate. So how many fish per mile in any given stream. We're able to do this work here because of the wisdom of conservationists that preceded us, specifically in the 1800s when this park was developed. Thank God that they had the forethought to look forward and say, this is something special, something that needs to be preserved. That's what this partnership brings. It brings enthusiasm. It brings resources that both teams absolutely need to get work done. The bottom line is we can't do it alone and we shouldn't do it alone, okay? We all have our areas of expertise. We think at DEC, having this broader tent canopy, so to speak, provides for better conservation and provides for a better future. And this has just been such a great relationship with Trout Unlimited. It's, you know, we've worked all across the state. We're really super excited about this project. One organization or the other can't do all of the work. There's a lot to do. And to see a crew of TU and DEC folks coming out to sample fish. We have this great opportunity here to use this not only as a place for restoration, but as a place for study. We can take what we learn here because we're taking the systems approach. We're in the public's trust. We have to show them we are making a difference here. And we're really excited about doing that. You know, when the glaciers receded, this landscape and this watershed was totally connected. Totally connected. The wetlands were connected to the streams and everything was connected to the ponds and they all fed the moose. And it's somewhat fractured now, just as our landscape is across the country. And so we're at a point though, where we think that we can remedy that and still afford to have this infrastructure that allows people to enjoy this beautiful place. And what I think is possible over the next five years is a fully connected South Miss. The beauty of TU is they bring in this habitat expertise that we really rely on and we work together to meet a common goal. Like Tracy and I, we're, we're doing our darndest to create a vision and see that vision through, but I, I think it's these folks here, biologists and technicians from both TU and DEC, they're working together on the ground, getting the good work done. This is gonna be the ordinary here for the next few years in the Moose River Plains. For folks interested and motivated to take care of native brook trout like the ones you find here in the South Moose, you can get in touch with Trout Unlimited chapters locally for volunteer events, and you'll find that we're celebrating public fishing rights access. We're all out getting out together, fishing on these streams, cleaning them up, planting trees to make them look beautiful and encouraging for more folks to open up public fishing rights. Uh, it's our firm belief at TU that people fall in love with rivers and then they want to take care of them. If the stories you're hearing today are something that moves you, get in touch with your local Trout Unlimited chapter and help us take care of the rivers.